Hey guys, Kevin here. The other day I did a video about the Mini SNES, which is here. And I talked about how it can be hacked now. There's a, a, a script out there called Hatch E2. It worked on the NES as well. It also works on the SNES Mini. So it works on the NES Mini and the SNES Mini. It also works on the Japanese versions. And my advice was to maybe wait a little bit. And the reason I was saying that was because Every few days they've been releasing a new version of the script and they have released another version since then. But since then I have talked to one of my subscribers, Evil Gage, and you know when I was talking to him, he left lots of great advice for me. I was put off by a lot of the steps, you know, there was a lot of things that you had to install Python, you had to convert a lot of files, etc. But he says you don't have to do that, and it is as simple as Evil Gage said. So I will do another video where I'll show you that, but in this video. I just want to show you my hacked mini SNES. So thanks to Evil Gage, I really do appreciate it. Um, without you, I probably wouldn't have been doing this for quite a while. So this is my mini SNES. And it looks the same, doesn't it? What I've done is put all the original games on the root. But if you go down here, you'll see this more games and I've got A to Z. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. In the Hatchy software, you can actually choose to put all the games on the root. You can remove pages, folders. You can do it like this, or you can just make it automatically split. There's about several different options you can do. What I wanted to do was just disable folders altogether and just have them all in a big long line. The problem is when you do that, it generates an error called C8. It comes up C8 error and it doesn't work. And whenever you search for that, you know, what, what's happening there. Most people say that you should probably only put 40 to 50 games um, on in each folder. So you can see here I've got A, and I've just kind of, it's a little platform, as Adam's family. So there's all the games beginning with A. Now, the format of the games that I've got were SMC, but a lot of people say that you had to convert them doesn't seem to be the case. I did, I've tried about three or four games. All of them worked except Rock and Roll Racing, which is one of my favourite games. Um, okay, see it, Bubs, Bubsy, yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of the advice that I was looking at before, the other, other guides that I was looking at, they're all outdated. And Evil Gage was 100% correct that you don't need to do all that. You don't need to, um, go through the complex tutorial, it's much, much simpler. So, I'll just reset it. You can actually do other things to it as well. You can like set up hot buttons to reset it and all this kind of thing as well. So, um, I want, I'll want i maybe change the button arrangement, uh, the folder arrangement, sorry, to you know, maybe organize it in a different way. But overall, I'm fairly pleased with it. You know, once you know the name of a game, you can just kind of browse through. Out of this world, it was a good game. Um, so I've got, I think I've got about 50 megabytes free. I've put about 238 games on it. And I think I've got about 50 megabytes free. Now, when you organize all your SNES games in a folder, you'll find that there's games at half a meg, there's games at one meg, 1 1.5 meg, 2 meg, 2.5. The most you'll get is four meg, four meg a game. So th there is only about, a, I don't know, maybe a dozen or two. Um, I'm just guessing here, but it could be about two dozen um, games that are about four gig, uh, four megabyte in size. So the total SNES catalog, you're talking over a gig, and really you, you need to use like basically like less than thirty percent of that. But there's a lot of terrible games, so it's quite easy um, to start deleting games you don't want. Plus, you know, I've added a lot of sports games here. I've added like NFL games and all that kind of thing. But there's lots of games. Um, for example, John Madden, there was John Madden, John Madden 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, and I've just put on 98. There's no point having several games at the same thing. Uh, and there's a few games where I've only put the sequel rather than the original. So, um, all the games do seem to be working. Um, I'll just jump into this game, I meant to go to a different layer. Got a bit of volume here. So, maybe see that a little bit better. Uh, 
as I said, the rock and roll racing didn't seem to be working. So I think it's important to show the problems that I've got. And it, it's maybe something to do with the file. It could be something to do with, you know, maybe I have to get a different version of it, like the European version or, or something like that. I don't know. Um, so there it's there, rock and, rock and roll racing. What, this was one of my favourite games because me and my friends used to play it a lot. Now it does actually load up, but when I put it on last time, it got to here, you know, the kind of end of the intro, and it just went black. Maybe it'll work now, I don't know. So it did that. So it could be the game, so don't look at this as gospel as in that game doesn't work. It could just be the game. You can see, if you hear it, it's still actually going there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so it must be something to do with the intro screen there. It does seem to be working. Now, you, you, I think you will encounter problems like that on a game-by-game -game basis. There might be the odd game that doesn't work well. Here's the good thing, though. The good thing about the way this Hatchy software works is that when you've actually set it up, you just... I could just unplug this, go back up to my room, plug into my computer, and then just change a setting, upload a different file, and then just synchronize it, and it takes seconds. I could change the settings on this, change the folder arrangement, and you know, go upstairs and downstairs in about two or three minutes. It isn't difficult, it's very, very easy to set up. Now, I will do another video. I'm a little bit rushed for time tonight and tomorrow, but I will do a video where I explain this and I'll show you how it all works. But I just wanted to show you all that it can be done and you know, as I said, thanks to Evil Gauge, I really do appreciate it. It is a lot simpler than a lot of the guides are saying. I think this is just because the latest software is a lot easier to use. It's been refined, they've, you know, they've addressed a lot of bugs. Um, and what it really does is trans transform the SNES Mini. The SNES Mini now, you know, it's went from a system that had 21 classic games on it to a system that's now got 238. I'll probably end up with... 250, 260 games on it when I, you know, when I filled it up and all the games seem to work well. The beauty of all this as well is that all these games that, you know, I could, I've could i showed you guys before I had the Raspberry Pi, but all of these games are going to work within this emulation system that Nintendo's built. So you're going to get the save, save uh, option, the save state. You're going to um, get the, you know, the really nice menu. You've obviously got the Super Nintendo controllers, and it's just a really cool setup. Oof. got beat there <laughs> right so enough of me being bad at games and um, thanks for watching guys i hope those of you who've got a mini snes um have found this useful in some way i will give more information about how you can do this check out my other video the other day as well i've got some information on that as well but really the, hacking the mini snes is a lot easier than i thought it was because i think a lot of the videos were using the older software it's very very simple it's very, very quick as well. And the, the beauty of it is once you've actually got it set up, you just have to plug it back into your computer and just tweak whatever settings that, you've, that you want to tweak. Um, and essentially what it's done is changed the, the SNES Mini Classic or whatever they call it. They've changed it from a really good little console to a fantastic little emulation system. It's got pretty much most of the SNES catalog. You just have to eliminate all the games you don't want. Thanks for watching guys. I will follow this up and I'll do, you know, show you more about how this works. But um, I would say that it's a lot easier than I originally thought. And updating the software doesn't mean that you need to go back to scratch and, you know, do everything again. So, yeah, very, very pleased. If the software that you need to use is called Hatchy 2. So please check that out. Thanks for watching. If you get any questions about any of this, Please do ask uh, below and I'll do my best to answer them. And to get you over here. And um, as always, thanks for watching. But again, thanks to Evil Gage. Um, you really did 
help me out there with all the, all the help you were giving me with the comments. So I really do appreciate it. Till next time, guys. Take care.